Hi, I'm Christy, founder of Globe Sage Travel and today's Table Talk, we have a very special guest, my friend and client, Diana. And today we just wanna chat with her. She has traveled all over and we are all dying to travel. So we're gonna uh, entertain our wanderlust a little bit here today and just chat about her journeys and uh, see if we can get any nuggets or tidbits that are fun. So Diana, thank you so much for joining us today. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, Christy. Hello, Dakota. Thank you for having me. Um, well, I live in Boston, Mass., well, North Shore of Boston, and I absolutely love to travel. I've been on some amazing trips, seen amazing places, um, the most delicious food I've ever had. That's probably my favorite of everything. Um, and it's just a great way to see the world, see how other cultures live. You were able to watch something on television or look at a magazine and say, oh, I've been there. So it's just, it, it's for me, it's, it's what I live for. So Diana, in a regular non-COVID year, how often would you say that you travel every year? I would say I do about three week long trips and some overnights and long weekends. So pretty much it comes out to be every other month. Love it. Yeah. So awesome. good. Living in New England, we have a great opportunity because we have Connecticut, we have Maine, we have New Hampshire, we have Vermont, we have Ver Rhode Island, uh, New York. So much um, to see. And it's only a five hour drive to Montreal, which makes mm -hmm. a great long weekend. So again, fortunately where we live geographically, it, it does afford us to do a lot of short term, overnight, two days, and even just a day trip. Yes, and I am also from the Northeast and I'm from New York. So I know all about how beautiful our portion of the country is and how really it's very unvisited. Like people don't visit it very often, but I love that you're able to take those little weekend getaways and everything. Um, so I guess question would be, when you do travel, who do you like to travel with? Uh, is it friends? Is it family? Do you like to go solo? Tell us a little bit about that. So for traveling, um, originally we used to just do, or I used to just do um, plans with just a couple of friends. And that was always fun. But then you kind of ran into that, like, well, what do we do next? Or what do we do next? Um, even though you have things planned. So I started getting involved with a travel meetup group and that was a lot of fun because we would start to go with groups and it would be a minimum of four people or six people. And on occasions it would be 30 people that we'd have to hire a bus. And the part I like, I think about that the most is that you actually learn from so many other people. I enjoy going with the groups. It makes it a lot more fun. It can be a little bit more challenging because of so many personalities, but all in all, um, it's just a great way to explore. I bet you've made a lot of friends over the years. Well, yeah. that's what I was just going to say. Over the course of my belonging to a travel meetup group and then forming my own four years ago, I have made some of the most best loving friends that I can imagine. Um, it's just been incredible that I now have, I'm actually getting goosebumps. Um, I have such a circle of friends around me that are really true friends. Mm -hmm. And we travel together, we visit each other, we go out to eat, celebrate birthdays, um, share in the downtime when things aren't going so well and then do the cheers for the great things. But honestly and truly, you know, being single and a lot of the women that are, I travel with and know they're as single as well. Like, I don't feel as though 
when I get old, I'm not going to have anybody. Mm, that's really cool. It's wonderful. It really, um, group travel's great. I, I'm now scaling down trips to, you know, if it's just like a trip that we're going to go on and it's just going to be a resort. Okay. 20 people fine. But if it's, yeah a trip that you're sightseeing and you're going to be up in the morning and you've got a, you're going on tours and different things, the smaller is, is better. I was on a trip about three years ago to Italy and there were six of us. I've seen and those pictures. That was, was a wonderful trip. Mm -hmm. It was fabulous because it was a small group we were able to go into restaurants that we would not have been able to go in if there was more people yeah when we went on tours and they were private tours it just felt that you could ask the tour director more questions they mm -hmm. got to know you better and it makes it more special i think it makes it more special more intimate really yeah Hey, I have a I have a question. Tell us a little bit about the trip that you and I planned together that was going to take place this year, but now is being bumped a year. But tell us a little bit about that and uh, what parts of it you're most excited about and, and even how you thought up doing this. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? That one, I think, came up because we went with a small group to the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, which was... Fabulous. And one of my friends who travels with me a lot does love parades. It was New Year's Eve and I'm like, this is crazy. And then the Rose Parade was on. And I said, you know what? Next year, we're going to the Rose Parade. Mm -hmm. And um, I just set my mind to it. And I reached out and fortunately I found Christy because I wanted to find an agent that number one was small. I'd like to work with independent small agencies. Um, number one, I like to support their business. Secondly, I believe that you get much more, <laughs> but you do get much more attention. Um, they will cater the trip to what you would like to do. For sure. Um, and think of a lot of things that you wouldn't think about. And also, it's nice to find an agent that, number one, either lives in the area, which mm -hmm. is familiar, or secondly, has or does specialize in yeah. that area. Yeah, I remember you called me and you were specifically looking for someone in Southern California. Yeah. But um, that just made it all the more fun to plan because I was like, Hmm, where would I take people if they were guests in my home? Like, where would I want to show them? Like, you know, everybody thinks of Disneyland and there's nothing wrong with that. But I was like, what can we do that's different and exciting and totally memorable to add on top of your main event, your Rose Parade trip? So it was so much fun to plan and I can't wait till it actually happens. Yeah. Oh, no. So tell us a little bit about some of the activities we planned. We're gonna, well, we're gonna stay at Universal and we have the Universal VIP Pass, which is actually, was a surprise to us that you got that. Um, and the women are super excited Thank about you. the whole package for that. Um, I know we're gonna be doing the, um, an LA tour. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll be doing the LA tour that we can see the stars walk and yeah. Those type of yeah. things. We're also going to be doing the drive that we'll be able to go by Malibu yes, and all beach. those beautiful beach. areas. Yes. Um, we're going to find a special place for New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing the pre um, pre float. No, the pre yeah the pre float with the flowers. Yep, decorating spaces or decorating, decorating. places where you yep. get to see the warehouse where they're putting the last finishing touches on it. And I, right. I think it's just going to be so much fun. Yeah. And then afterwards, after the parade, we're going to be doing the, um, viewing the floats when yep. they're finished. So it's, it's really 
Yep. That's a and then I remember, path. and then I remember one of the important things when you and I talked was we want to get good seats. We don't want to be just like where we're straining to see the parade. So not only did we get the primo seats, but we did the VIP packet yes. where you have breakfast waiting for you and you have like a, a seat cushion so that you're not on these bleachers all hard all day and you have a, like a souvenir brochure or, or pamphlet and all that. I think you guys are going to walk away with so many memories. And um, yeah, now that it's, I mean, we were all devastated when uh, it, the word came down officially, the Rose Parade is canceled. But I, we had talked about it. We knew that this trip was still going to happen. It just bumped a year. So, well, well, I'm really glad that together you and I constructed a trip that is just going to be so much fun. And yes. it's so great because I get to like kind of pop in and like yes. meet you all in person. And, and you're right. I mean, traveling all the way from Boston, you want to make it worth your trip. And so adding those special things onto the trip, I think, was really smart. Diana, I also love traveling with friends. It obviously makes everything so much better when you have someone to share it with and when it's special girlfriends and, you know, years down the road, you can sit around a table like this talking about your favorite memories and the funny moments. And, um, but I guess apart from that, cause I know that you said you travel with a meetup travel group a lot. Yes. And so when it comes to wrangling all of these women, planning this big trip for a lot of different travel personalities, how do you do it? Well, first off, what I do is I like to have the group be included. So I usually once a year will send something out and say, this is not an event, but please close some places that you would like to visit and why. So from that, I've got this monstrous list of, of the <laughs> places that people would like to go to. And yeah. then I look and see where the majority of people would like to go. Um, if it's something that is, is feasible or, you know, it doesn't make sense. Like, again, so I, I find out what the needs are and then I begin to start a little bit of research on my own because I kind of call it my hobby as well. Yes, because you love that part. It. Yeah, and yeah, I'll do a little bit of research, best times to visit, et cetera. And then that's when I partner with Christy now um, and whom I've used in the past for local trips. And then we bounce things off and ideas. And once they get to know what the women look for, what they like, um, I have them look at past trips and their comments. So now it helps them get to know the clientele. Um, I think for me too, the most important part of a trip, because I've done it only once and I'll never do it again, but it was the best thing to do, is I don't like a trip that every single day it's go, 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 go. Yeah. 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 So totally. if there was an afternoon tour and then you wanted to squeeze something else in, I'd rather take that squeeze something else in off and maybe extend that tour for another hour mm -hmm. so that you're not rushing through seeing and snapping pictures and all of that um, so. but yeah so that's pretty much how how it gets done you know and um so far it's worked out great Christy, Christy laughed when you said your monstrous list of ideas, because it's true. We know that you're always bursting with ideas, which we love because I, our job, we constantly are looking at new things and ideas to travel. Do you want to talk about a couple of the fun, exciting stuff that we're going to start planning for next year and the year after? Yes. So we have on for a U.S. trip is Sedona. Mm, yeah. So um, that's one that I know um, you both have been working on. I know, Dakota, you've been sending some plans and you really have found some quite interesting things that I didn't even know were available. So awesome. that's kind of fun. Um, so that's going to be an exciting one. And I'm pretty confident we'll be able to do that in 2021. Um, where it is in the U.S. and uh, Well, obviously, with everything going on, we're probably going to be on U.S. soil for at least the next year. So we do want to hear a little bit about, if you wouldn't mind sharing, some of your favorite U.S. trips, favorite U.S. travel memories. So I would say probably the 
favorite U.S. trip has to have been our, um, our Charleston and Savannah. Mm. That was a wonderful trip. And that one, actually, there were 31 of us, believe wow. it or not. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Tell us what was so great about it. What were the highlights for you? Yeah. Well, it just, it was planned out very well. Um, the tour director was familiar with us because she had done some smaller trips. So she had known the group and it was a large group, a little bit much larger actually than what I really would have liked, but it was just planned out so perfectly. Mm. And I get speechless sometimes only because it met and exceeded my expectation. Wow. Um, I didn't really know other than looking at photos of what Charleston was like or Savannah was like. And, you know, uh, we went to plantations, um, tea plantations, which were gorgeous, that we were able to taste the teas and purchase them, um, do rides through like lagoons that, also had these sprawling, beautiful, unusual trees. Charleston, I believe it was Charleston, that we did the horse and buggy ride through town. Um, the food, the music. Um, Savannah, well, Savannah was fun for me because you could walk along the boardwalk area with your drink <laughs> in the yeah. middle of the day. Um, and there were vendors there and great shops. And um, we saw two beautiful shows there each night. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, again, everything that we did going to these uh, tours on inside of the, the mansions and the plantations and how people lived. Uh, it was a perfect trip. It had the well balance of touring and free time. Nice. So yeah, so that one for for US. Um, I mean, I've been to California and Florida and mm -hmm. North East Coast everywhere and everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Charleston and Savannah, I have to say, was a, a real highlight. And the women that were on that trip still talk about it to this yeah. day. And I love that you mentioned because those three cities for me, I mean, they're just so much history and culture packed in them. Yeah. It's almost like when you really lean into it and you do the tours and the experiences and you learn about the cities when you're in them, it's like you're in another country almost, you know, it's, yeah, yeah it's really cool. Yeah. So part of what I love about the traveling is also that when I do go away, especially more so now on the international trips, is that I always pick up unique um items to put around my home and um, I also love finding artwork that when I bring it home I can frame it so now when I look around my house I'm not looking at a photo from a TJ Maxx that just matches and looks pretty yeah I can look in my living room and say I got that print when I was in the Azores and it was an art store that was next to the restaurant we were eating at mm -hmm. um, you know, I got this here when we were in Barcelona and we visited La Sagrada Familia. Yeah. And this was in the gift shop or... Uh -huh. um, so then when you see it in your home, it triggers the memory all over again and you get to experience <laughs> that memory over and over. I, I'm, I'm the same way. I literally have pictures on my wall from my trips to Indonesia and I have artifacts from... India and Philippines and Taiwan and like I love little things that when I see them I remember where I was when I got it. Yeah absolutely that's the best part and then I'm kind of funny because all the ladies laugh at me when we go on trips because they think I'm a shopaholic but when I do go on my trips I actually buy all of my birthday presents oh. and Christmas presents for the year. Wow, I love that idea. So when Christmas time comes, I have everybody's gift or when their birthday comes. And it's something that I let them know that I thought of them while I was on the trip. Secondly, it's something that they're not going to get anywhere else. Um, and it makes my life a heck of a lot easier. 
Yeah. Um, so I love doing that. Um, I love I that idea. Of, yeah. I <laughs> but I do. I love that idea. And then the gift becomes so much more personal because yes. you picked it out not only specifically for the person, but in another country while you're thinking of right. them. What a great idea. So how do you handle that with luggage? Do you pack, pack an extra bag that you can fold out? I usually buy an extra suitcase when I'm there. Got it. Got oh, it. my goodness. <laughs> you have lots of suitcases is what you're saying. Yeah, but they come from different countries. That's amazing. <laughs> That's so funny. I love that. Oh, man. I'm gonna... So, Diana, when you're trying to pull together a group, how long in advance are you looking at you know, pulling together the itinerary and figuring out what you're going to do before you start promoting it. How, how long of a lead time do you typically like to have? If, um, if the group trip is going to be a week long trip, it's one year in advance. Got it. Yeah. Um, because there's so many things to pull together and also mm -hmm. too, to find out where the interest is. Yeah. Um, to make it worth the time and the energy and the effort. Yeah. For myself and also for the agent to make mm -hmm. sure it's worth it. Yeah. So, but definitely one year out, I post a week long trip. Absolutely. If yeah. it's a weekend trip or a day trip, that, that, that's not a, not a big issue, but just as things trips, come up, you put them on the list. Well, actually, if you think about it, I think I contacted you in January yeah. for the Rose Parade. That's right. You did. And we were getting nervous and I was, we were like, oh my God, we've got to get the tickets. Yes. We want the VIP tickets. When I do know. They go on sale? We've got to get them. I remember that was our first order of business. It's like, okay, yeah. we're go only going to give them a week to get their deposit in because we right. do not want to lose those tickets. And I called them up and I'm like, okay, when did they sell out? And so, yeah. yeah, we got it done, man. And we have those tickets that will be automatically right. bumped to the next year. So we don't even yeah. have to stress about it now. Yeah. <laughs> so Diana, are there any other stories you want to share? Anything that is a we can't miss kind of thing that you've done? Well, I know that I've mentioned how much I love the food when I travel. So um, one of the things that I find to be super fun is to experience a cooking class with and whichever country that you're going yes. to. Yes. Um, and when we did our trip to um, Lake Como and Lake Maggiore and Florence, um, we did a cooking class and it was absolutely amazing. It was so much fun. Um, the chef working with us was a blast. Um, we joked with her and she joked back. The owner was joking. Um, to see how simple, I think that was probably one of the most surprising things for me is that, you know, you're looking at like, oh my God, homemade pasta, you know, it's so much work. Um, but like she, we, we made the pasta without that pasta maker and oh. all of that. Yeah, it was just, you know, with your hands and everything. And then uh, after that was done, we got to eat that along with a wine tasting and oh my god did they share a lot of wine with us but, um, <laughs> oh my goodness but I so think everybody was leaving happy <laughs> yes yes our bellies were full and we were all smiling but I think nice. most of us smile on trips yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, cooking classes on trips for me is, is probably one of the absolute must when it's international. Yeah, that's actually it's, one of my favorite things to do. My husband and I both, we can't go anywhere without trying to find a cooking class. I recently found one in Argentina. Get this. It's not your traditional like set up with a chef and a big group of people. It's in a woman's home and yes. she actually brings people like up to four people in her home or if it's a family she'll take a little bit more and you'll make a full three course meal together she'll have traditional uh argentinian drinks and i mean I, this woman is so cool i've actually spoken with her we've seen a video on youtube of how she does the class and i cannot wait to do the experience myself because it's so special and personal yeah. And, and to be in someone's home and see real 
Argentinian life and she's a professional woman. She does this as a little fun side gig. And it's, yeah, it, I love stuff like that. It's just so unique. Diana, um, just from Dakota and I, we're so thankful for you. We're so glad that you came on and did this with us. It is so much fun to hear your stories and your experiences. And I can't wait to go on some trips with you in the future and uh, just enjoy that together. So thanks for being here with us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye guys. Bye, thank Bye. you, thank you.